Um, there's very little intelligence involved on either side, uh, which is why I'm going to mention this. I have told either side this. You bloodthirsty scumbags on both sides were agitating or looking forward to a civil war are complete morons. War is terrible. It's blood and gore and guts and veins in your teeth and eating dead burnt bodies. And actually, I should not minimize it like that by quoting Alice's Restaurant by Arlo Guthrie. War is the most horrific thing a human being can engage in. War is your best friend's brains being splattered all over the wall. War is your son being beaten to death with a baseball bat to the point where he is utterly unrecognizable. War is your daughter, your wife, your girlfriend being gang raped by 500 men. And that is not an exaggeration. Ex-CBS reporter Lara Logan learned the hard way when she, after she was raped by 500 men during the Arab Spring uprising in Egypt. And it wasn't just male body parts, are there? They used flagpoles, sticks, and anything else that they could shove inside her bloody vagina and anus. The fact that Lara Logan still lived to tell this tale is a miracle. She was hospitalized for weeks, and I assume will need, you know, good psychological therapy for the rest of her life. That's your daughter, your wife, your sister, your girlfriend. That's what lies in store for them during a real war. War is your neighborhood and businesses being set aflame. Sometimes war is being burned alive inside a flaming structure that you can't escape. Or it's being burned alive when the enemy pours gasoline on you and then lights you on fire. Or it's your son, your daughter, or your infant screaming in agony as their flesh is burned down to the bone. And that only touches on the horrors of war. That's just the beginning. And you scumbags on both sides are rooting for it. I've seen you on social media sometimes. I've engaged with you. You sicken me with your eagerness to experience all that. And on the right, good God, they're giddy with anticipation. They think it'll be a short war because the left is anti-gun, so they think the left has no guns. Well, wrong again, you bloodthirsty scumbags. Watch the videos. Look at the images. The left is well-armed and entrenched. And on the left, they're just waiting for an excuse. They think that it's all justified, and they're going to tear down the system. Well, vote, guess again, you wrong, bloodthirsty scumbags. The right and libertarians like myself will not let you destroy everything. War is death and horror on every side. And worse, you're both a pack of morons if you think you're going to really win. Nobody wins in a civil war. It is just horror. It never turns out the way that either side wants. You bloodthirsty, murderous, eager pack of bastards on both sides. You sicken and disgust me. You have no idea what you're getting into. Check my chat here real quick. Trump Drew says, war is evil, pure and simple. Yes, it is. Uh, he also said, when the guns start firing, you don't know how many children are going to die, how many lives will be ruined. You and I, men, we are two great minds thinking alike. <laughs> because now, as many of my uh, longtime viewers know, a long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, I was once an actor. But I was never a great actor. Um, if I was, I'd still be an actor. Um, and I'm certainly not at the level of the British actor Peter Capaldi, who played the 13th Doctor, on the TV series Doctor Who. However, as Drop of Truth is pointing out, there is a rather brilliant speech about war that was written by Stephen Moffat for Capaldi's Doctor. I can't show this to you because the BBC is very jealously, aggressively guarding their copyrights and will do things to this video after it's done. So unfortunately, you're just going to have to bear along with me trying to take, make do with uh, Moffat's speech. 
I'm going to approach this the same way that my the late great acting guru, Dr. William Morgan, suggested. When you go into an audition, I guess you can kind of consider an audition. When you go into an audition, you may say to yourself, you know, I may not be the greatest actor in the world, but listen to this material. This is great material. So I'm going to just do it. Apologies to Peter Capaldi. I will never be able to do it the way that you did. Those of you who want war. You just want cruelty to beget more cruelty. You are not superior to the people who are cruel to you. You're just a whole bunch of new cruel people. A whole bunch of new cruel people being cruel to other people who will then be cruel to you. The only way anyone can live in peace is if you're prepared to forgive. Why did you break the cycle? And what is it that you actually want? War? Well, when the war is over. When you have your homeland free from the left or the right in this case. What do you think it's going to be like? Do you have... Do you know? I mean, have you given it any thought? Have you given it any consideration? Because you're very close to getting what you want. So, what's it going to be like? Paint me a word picture. Are you going to have, live in houses? Do you want everybody to go to work? When will the holidays be? Oh, what about the music? Do you think people will be allowed to play violins? Who will make the violins? Well... Oh, you don't actually know, do you? Because just like every tantruming child in history, you don't actually know what you want. So let me ask you a question about this brave new world of yours. When you've killed all the bad guys, and it's all perfectly just and fair, when you have it exactly the way you want it, what are you going to do with people like you, the troublemakers? How are you going to protect your glorious revolution from the next one? Well, maybe you'll win, but nobody wins forever. The wheel just keeps on turning. So come on, break the cycle. I'm just trying to get you to see. I hope that I'm almost there. But let's imagine for a moment that each side has a box, and on that box are two buttons. And if you press one, you have a 50-50 chance of killing the other side or your own. And so we're off. Fingers on the buzzers. Who's feeling lucky? Are you ready to play the game? Who's going to be the quickest? Who's going to be the luckiest? Because that is not a game. It is a scale model of war. Every war ever fought right there in that box. Because it's always the same. When you fire that first shot, no matter how right you feel, you have no idea who's going to die. You have no idea whose children are going to scream and burn. How many hearts will be broken? How many lives are shattered? How much blood will be spilled until everybody does what they were always going to have to do in the first place? Sit down and talk. Just listen to me. Listen. I just want you to think. You know what thinking is? It's just, it's just a fancy word for changing your mind. And if you will not change your mind, then you will die stupid. Alternatively, you could just step away from the box. You could walk out the door and stand down your revolution. And if you don't think I understand war, are you kidding me? Of course I understand. I mean, do you call whatever you're going to do a war, this funny little thing, a war? It's not a war. I fought in a war bigger than you can ever know. I did things you could never imagine. And when I close my eyes, I hear more screams than anyone will ever be able to count. And do you know what you do with all that pain? Shall I tell you what you do with it? You hold it tight till it burns your hand. And you say this, no one else will ever have to live like this. No one will ever have to feel this pain. Not on my watch.
ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.